Hi. Now in this tutorial what I want to do is show you how we can find out how many roots an equation like this has, roots being solutions, or this one, and also to get a rough estimate of what those solutions could be. Now to do this what I want to do is take you back to a basic curve y equals x squared minus 4x plus 3. It's a parabola and you can see it crosses the x-axis at the points 1 and 3. So if I made y equals 0 and we had 0 equals x squared minus 4x plus 3 we can use the graph to solve this equation. It's just simply where we've set y equal to 0 which is this line and it'll be where it crosses at 1 and 3. So we see that there's two roots and those two roots are in fact 1 and 3. x equals 1 and 3. But it's not the only way to solve this equation graphically. What we can do is we can split it up. Suppose we add 4x to both sides and subtract 3 we would get x squared equals 4x minus 3. Now if we were to draw the graph of y equals x squared it would look something like this. And if I was to draw the line y equals 4x minus 3 well it would be a line that goes through minus 3 on the y-axis. Let's just say that's there. And we'll have a line going something like this. And what I would find is that it crosses the curve, the curve y equals x squared. Let's just mark that in. We've got y equals x squared and we've got the line y equals 4x minus 3. What I'd notice is it crosses in two places. And if I was to look at what the corresponding x values are down here and down here and I would find that they were 1 and 3 exactly the same x values as we had up here. So by breaking the equation out like this, separating it, drawing two simpler graphs, okay, we can still get the same result, two roots, two points of intersection between the graphs and those roots are still x equals 1 and 3. So what does that mean then? Well if I had something like this equation to solve and I was asked to find out how many roots this had, how many solutions, well to draw this graph y equals e to the power x plus x minus 3 would be very difficult to do. But if I was to rearrange this, say, let's say add 3 to both sides and subtract x, then I would therefore have e to the x equals 3 minus x. So if I was to draw the graph y equals e to the x, which we should know is a graph that looks like this, it doesn't touch the x-axis but comes up here through a 1 and then goes up like so. Where it crosses the y-axis would be at 1. So this would be the graph of y equals e to the x, a standard graph. And what about y equals 3 minus x? Well that is a straight line graph passes through the y-axis at 3 and it's got a negative gradient, a gradient of negative 1. So it's going to be up here say at 3 coming downwards like so. So this is the graph of y equals 3 minus x. So can you see then that we have one root just here, this point of intersection. And that particular root would be the value you get when you come down here and read off the x value there. So we have just one root in this particular example and as I say to get that root, let's call it x1, one root x1, you just draw these on graph paper and read out roughly what that value was. Okay, And you can see as well that 
We know that this graph crosses the x-axis when y is 0, so that would mean that x would have to be 3. This point here is 3, so at least we now know that this root here, x1, has got to be a number less than 3. OK, let's try this one. Well, I say let's try it. Why don't you pause the video? Have a go. Think about how you would find out how many roots there were for this equation. OK, well, let's see how you got on. If I was doing this, I would make natural log of x the subject. Natural log of x equals, and I would add x to both sides and subtract 3. So I've got natural log of x equals x minus 3. And I would draw the graph of y equals the natural log of x, which you should know is a graph that comes up like this through 1 on the x-axis and then carries on off like that. So this would be the graph then of y equals the natural log of x. It doesn't touch the y-axis, it just comes straight down here. Okay, The y-axis is what we call an asymptote. Then I need to draw the graph of y equals x minus 3. So this is going to be a graph, a straight line graph, going through minus 3 on the y-axis, so we'll have that as minus 3. It's got a positive gradient of 1, so it's going to be going upwards, say something like this, through here. So clearly, there's two points of intersection, one here and one here. So what would our roots be? Well, all we need to do is project down onto the x-axis. So we've got this one here and we've got this one which if I project it up is this point here. So we've got one there and one there. x1 if you like and x2. So we can see here we've got two roots for this equation. Those roots being whatever x1 is and whatever x2 is. It's worth pointing out that the graph of the natural log of x cuts the x-axis at 1. So I can see that x1 has got to be somewhere between 0 and 1. And for this line, which I haven't marked in, we'll just mark it in now, y equals x minus 3, we can see that this line crosses the x-axis at 3. So it's clear to see that the root x2 must be more than 3. OK, well that brings us now to the end of this tutorial. So uh, I hope that's given you some idea then of how we can use graphs to determine the number of roots an equation has and also if we were to plot the graphs, we would be able to get a reasonable estimate to the roots.